Hi guys, it's Sam for Digital Meet again, and um, we're doing another tutorial about the new features in Cinema 4D R18. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over uh, the new um, parallax bump mapping in Cinema 4D. So I suppose we better just get straight into it, and um, we'll set up our normal bump first. So I'm just going to create a plane in the scene, and then set up a material. So going to choose a color let's make it a nice red we'll give it a reflectance channel as well I'm going to remove the default specular and add a GDX and turn on the layer for now dielectric um, and then we need something in our bump channel okay so I'm just going to move that over here I'm going to put that on there uh, also because I'll be rendering let's put a sky object in the scene make a new material and uh, call this sky Turn off the color and the reflectance. Turn on the luminance. Uh, we'll go to our content browser. And I'm just going to go to presets, hit the search button, type in HDR. And there we go. We've got something to reflect in there. So that'll do. We just choose this, bang it in. Okay, that's good. Um, I'm just going to. Okay, yep, yeah, that's fine. And then we can whack this on our sky object and we don't really want to see the sky in the uh, scene so cinema 4d tag composite in seen by camera no okay brilliant okay so in our um uh material for our plane i'm just going to go to the editor and say the texture preview size is uh yeah, we'll just say it's a 1K and the reflect uh, reflectance preview as well. I'm going to I'm going to make that a bit bigger so it's uh, a little bit nicer. Um okay, so the bump channel. And let's set something up. We're going to set up a normal bump first and then we'll go from there. So if I turn on the bump channel, you can see there's nothing in there at the moment. So let's add a texture. Um I'm going to go down to surfaces and choose tiles. Now we know that um even though it can get information from color as you see here because if we go in we can see there's some red values and whatnot but um a bump is usually red from a grayscale image so i'm gonna change the color of my tiles to grayscale values so we'll have that as a as a gray we'll have this one as a darker darker one and we'll have this one as white and um squares is good uh randomized color and if you don't like the way that this has been arranged you can change the seed and it will randomly generate you know from those colors so something like that is fine for me um yep so we're all good now you can kind of see that we've got this bump on our um on our uh, plane object already and if i was to render this in fact let's set up a render settings i'm going to change it to physical um that's all good i'm going to the physical tab and it's adaptive i'm going to change that to automatic and say that it's got a 15 percent error threshold that should do as for now now if i render this this is what our image looks like with just a bump on it in fact i'm going to change the um the size of this as well let's lock the ratio and change this to 800 just so we get a quicker render from the picture viewer okay so that's what our bump looks like and you know it is showing in the viewport as well so we get a general idea of it so that's just a regular bump now we're going to talk about um the parallax bump now i suppose it'd be good to find out what parallax means um basically uh the parallax effect is say you've got um an object it <laughs> oh excuse me um say you have an object in the uh foreground and you've got one in the background um the parallax is what happens when uh the observer's position changes and the relationship between these objects so if i was so the viewport camera being the observer us if I move, you'll see that there's parallax happening between these two two objects. And if I obviously change the distance between us, you'll see that the parallax effect between those two objects 
is because of the observer's movement. And I've actually found a nice video on a Vimeo by Jason Simpson, and he's got some parallax effect examples. So as you can see here, the relationship between this tree and the objects behind it, this, you know, uh, movement, the fact that, you know, more of this sky is getting revealed here because of the position of the viewer, that is the parallax effect. Same thing going on here, the relationship between this guy and the guy behind him is changing. And that's what parallax means. So um, if we go into our bump channel, um, you've now got this parallax offset and then you've got parallax samples. So if I change the offset, in fact, let's up the bump a little bit as well. Let's change this to 60. Okay, we can see it a lot better in our viewport now. So this parallax offset, let's, let's crank it up. Now you'll see that our preview here, if I was to undo that, our preview here actually changes and gives us an idea of what's going on, but we don't get any update in the viewport. And that is because you don't. Uh, it's only at render time that you'll see a difference. So what I'm gonna do is set up our interactive render region. If you hold down the render button, go down to the bottom, interactive render region. Um, I'm just gonna make this the size of the screen. It shouldn't take that long to render to be honest. And also I'm going to up our quality as well to the top. So it just, it'll render every time you move basically. Um, okay. So this has just got the bump on it now. So let's whack up the offset. I'm going to whack it up to say 40. And now you can see what that's done. Let's change it to 40. Okay. So now you can see that it looks like, um, you know, we've got some actual depth going on. Um, but you can see where this effect fails and that's at the end because obviously I can, I can move around this object and the, the part where the parallax comes in is, is the fact that this tile here is actually occluding the tile behind it. Now, if I was to scooch around like this and render the parallax, the relationship between those two objects has changed. But the great thing about this is unlike displacement, which we covered in a, um, or tessellation, which I covered in a tutorial a uh, couple before this one, is that it doesn't have to create any extra geometry at render time. This is still a flat plane. Um, if I go into the display and turn on lines and just uh, grab a corner of this, come on, there we go and whip it down. Well, actually, it's got a lot more segments than I thought it did, but we can actually drop this down to one segment. So this is one polygon with that information on it, and I'll still get the same result. And it's very quick. You can see that it's very quick um, when it renders. Whereas with the displacement, you will not suffer from this problem at edges where you can see that the map is, you know, you know, it's being cut off. You can see that there. Um, you won't suffer from that problem with displacement, but with displacement, um, what's actually happening is that it's creating an extra geometry. So, in fact, that can be demonstrated if I open up our material again, go to the bump, copy this. Um, oops, sorry. Copy, 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 copy shader, turn off the bump, turn on displacement, and uh, paste the shader here. Do, 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 do. Turn on sub poly displacement. Um, it's obviously not enough. Okay, so what's going on here then? Let's see if we can uh, turn on tessellation in our viewport and then turn on tessellation to uniform. Okay, let's just grab that okay so we've got some you there's not enough segments in our plane that's all that's all that's happening here so if i up this to say 50 you can see now that it's actually creating um extra geometry at render time you can see the actual uh the tessellation going on here and if I turn off our line so we can have a better look. Yeah, so I'm getting I'm getting real-time tessellation in the viewport now. 
Um, but it's having to create that extra geometry to um, achieve that result. It's having to do some subdivisions on the surface of this. Whereas with our bump, none of that's necessary. Um, I can actually put this back down to one. Now, uh, there still seems to be some tessellation. There we go. So yeah, with this uh, technique, we get this result. It's clean, it's fast. It's a lovely, nice new feature of Cinema 4D. And let's try it on some different objects. So let's get a sphere. Um, we'll get rid of this plane and we'll whack this material on our sphere. So there, we, it looks like we've got some depth um, and you can see again where it's failing when it gets to the edge there. But um, this may be extremely useful for cases where, you know, you're zoomed right into an object and you're not going to see the edges. So there, I mean, that, that definitely gives the illusion of some kind of depth. Um, works very well. And it's, like I said, it's quick. So let's try something else. Let's try do, 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 do a cube and see how this works out for us. Okay. Lovely. That's working really, really well. But again, you can see where it fails at the edges. So really, you just got to really consider how you're going to use this um, and um, be careful of those, of the limitations of it. But, you know, for something like this, it'd be incredibly helpful. Um, and I think it's a welcome new addition to Cinema 4D 18, R18 even. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's the um, parallax bump. One, one more thing that I should probably note, actually, the parallax samples. Um, so we've got this set in parallax samples. Let's have a look at the help menu. Okay, so at the left, the parallax samples are too small. At right, size correct correctly. Normally these values do not have to be modified. However, if parallax offset was set very high, artifacts as shown on the left of the above image would appear. Okay, so we've got some sort of streaking and okay, to offset this, increase the parallax sample value, higher values result in correspondingly longer render times. Okay, so um, I wonder if this thing at the edge would be considered an uh, artifact. I don't think it is. I, th I think it's just a limitation of what the shader can do. But let's just times this by two and see if it actually makes a, an effect. Yes, it did actually. If I go back to eight and um, we take a look at this area here. In fact, let's zoom in and see if we can get those artifacts looking bigger. Yes, we can. Okay, good. Okay, so you can see this kind of stepping on this edge here, and here, and here. I hope this comes out on the video, but yeah, ooh. yeah, have a think, go on. Yeah, okay, so this stepping here, um, it's illustrating that there's not enough samples, and you can see that here as well. So if we go to 8 and we times by 2, make it 16, and watch these that stepping there, you can see that that stepping, even though it's still present, um, there's m m more samples, so there's the, that stepping has become sort of smaller and more, uh, and the frequency of it has gone up. So if we times this by two, 16, so it will be 32, we should see this stepping get, get even smaller. Yeah, there we go. And that has now sorted our problem, it's leveled it out. So we shouldn't be getting any issues there now. Should be nice and smooth. Yep, that's great. So that's what the uh, sample sample does. It will um, any artifacting on edges like that. It will um, sort sort you out. Um, so I'd increment them up, and uh, and um, that should solve it for you. Anyway, I think that about covers uh, the parallax bump. Um, as always, check out the Facebook page and um, you know the merch store if you want to donate to Digital Meat Keepers going. That'll be really good. I'll put links to all of those things in the uh, description below the video. Uh, cheers for listening, guys. I hope that helped. Bye.